Okay, so we have that recursive. A sub 1 is the first term. A sub n is the term we want. A sub n minus 1 is the previous term. And the 5 is the common difference, meaning I'm adding 5 to each term. So we should, everybody's okay with the recursive from yesterday, right? Okay, so here it says describe what the parts of the formula mean in the context of the situation. So we're going to go back and look at it in terms of what we're talking about here. So um, when he starts lifting weights, what, how much does he start with? 15. He starts with 15 pounds. Does that make sense? So that A sub 1 or first term is 15 pounds of weights that he starts lifting. Is everybody okay with that? Yes? Okay, then um, the a sub n, of course, the term we want. a sub n minus 1 is the previous term. All right, so then we've got this 5, which we know is the, so d is equal to 5. That is our common difference. What does that mean in the problem itself? What are we adding 5? What does that mean? What are we doing every time? Yeah, we're going to add 5 what in this problem? Pounds. 5 pounds. All right, so 5 pounds um, added each time. All right, so then it says list the first four terms of the sequence. What's the first term? 15. Then? Okay. And 30. Everybody okay there? Don't forget the first term is that a sub 1. Will they always give us the first term? Do they have, like, they don't have to. So if they didn't give me the first term, but I knew what the pattern was, if my pattern is adding 5 and I know the third term, how would I get back to the first term? I would subtract. So I'd subtract 5 and get me back to the second term. I would subtract 5 and get me back to the first term. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. So we could go backwards. Okay. All right, so then it says Keegan wants to continue this pattern for 20 weeks. He wants to know how many pounds he can lift after 20 weeks of workout. Does the recursive formula provide a practical way for Keegan to find how many pounds he can lift in 20 weeks? So could we do it? Yes. Could we find 20 weeks? Yes. yes. We would have to just keep doing what? Add five. Add five and add five and add five and add five. Is that a practical way? Because the question is, is it practical to do that? No. No. All right. Does everybody agree that that's not super practical? I mean, we can do it, but y'all mess up. When we mess up, sometimes just add once or twice. So trying to do it 20 times is highly likely we would make a mistake. So I'm going to say no. Like It's not efficient. That's the word I'm going to use. Does that make sense when I say it's not efficient? So if it's not efficient, what's the problem with it? It's not efficient and it's not practical. Why? Because you're doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it takes what? A lot of what? Time. time. Do we have a lot of time? So I'm going to say, and um, it takes too long. Like, that's what I'm going to say. Could we do it? Yes. But it takes too long. It's not practical. It's not efficient. All right, things aren't efficient. That means it doesn't go smoothly and quickly. All right, so. What we call, and they do not give you that word really in this blank, it's called an explicit formula, which it's written up at the top. So an explicit formula of the sequence allows us to find any term in the sequence without having to sit there and have that previous term and add five and add five and add five and add five, and add five or whatever the process is. Everybody okay there? So it's just, it's a, it's a better way to do it. All right, so the explicit formula looks like this. So we have this. A sub n, which we know that n represents the term we want or need, whatever word you want to use there. So that's the term that I want, the term that I need. All right? Then they give me A sub 1. What is A sub 1? Say again? Your initial. Yeah, the first term in the sequence. Okay? I don't want to use the word initial there because initial we usually use as a y-intercept and this is not going to be your y-intercept. Do you understand why it's not the y-intercept? The y-intercept has an x value of what? The y-intercept has an x value of zero. Okay? 
So, but this, if we remember yesterday when we looked at that, that A1, that means it's the first term. That means the x value there is 1, so it is not the y-intercept. So I don't really want to use that initial value. I'm going to use first term because we're talking about a sequence specifically. Everybody okay there with why I'm not using that word? All right, and then D is our common difference. All right, so it's the same as yesterday. All right, so it says to understand how the explicit formula is derived. Do you all understand that word derived? You may know what that word means. It means like where it comes from. It's like where it originated or how you get it. All right, it says Keegan writes out the first four terms of his sequence as the sum of the initial term and the common difference. And then they want us to simplify the expressions for a, uh, a sub 2, 3, and 4, and then by, re by rewriting the repeated addition. Okay, so if I did this one right here, a sub 1, like, that is the first term, so I don't have to worry about it. So this one, then I would have 15 plus 15, which would give me, and if we wrote it in this format, then I would have 15 plus the first term times 1, or the first term times 15 is equal to 20. This will make sense in a few minutes. It won't make sense initially, but it will in a few minutes. So here I've got two fives here, right? So essentially I have 15 plus 2 times 5. That's supposed to be a 5 in this parentheses up there. All right, which would give me 25, which we already know what it is. This one, since there's three fives here, it would be 15 <coughs> plus 3 times is equal to 30. So that's essentially like we're taking however many places I need, I would multiply it times that common difference and then add it to my initial value. Everybody okay with how that works? Okay, to, to get it. So that would be a faster way to go about it. All right, but they want us to be able to write this explicit formula. So number one, it says, what pattern do you notice between the number of times the common difference was multiplied and the term number. All right, so the number of times my common difference was multiplied, how many times here? Once. Once. What term did I want? Uh, what term was I looking for? A what? A2. A2. All right, so here I had two, right? Two of my fives, but I was looking for term what? Two. Three. Here I had three fives and I was looking for term what? Four. So what's that pattern? Each time, what's the relationship between this number and this number? This number and this number? This number and this number? Because it's the same every single time. What do you see? Because I'm not telling you, so we'll sit here as long as it takes. There's more time than that. Turn around and say that one more time. There's one. There's more time. Okay, what is the relationship? Listen to my question, or the question is here. What pattern is there between the number of times that we multiplied times five here and the number of the term that we wanted? Because the pattern is identical every single time. You have to see the pattern. This is a one, this is a two. This is a two, this is a three. This is a three, this is a four. What would the next one be? If I wanted the fifth term, how many fives would I need? Four. Four. If I wanted the sixth term, how many fives would I need? Five. Okay. If I wanted the tenth term, how many fives would I need? Nine. So what is the pattern every single time? Uh, One less. That's what we need. All right. So we need one less five. Uh, then, I'm going to say then, the term we are looking for. Does that make sense to everybody to write it that way? So that's where this little n minus 1 comes from. That's why we use the n minus 1 because it's 1 less. Everybody okay there? Yes? Okay. So here, if you think about it, if I had my n minus 1 and my n was 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0, which is why I don't add any 5s there. Is that logical? Does that fit the pattern? Okay. 
All right, so number two, it says plug in values for a sub one and d into the explicit formula for Keegan's situation. And then we're gonna simplify this expression. So they gave us a sub n is equal to, I've got my starting number, which is 15. That's my a sub one up there, okay? Plus, and then I've got n minus one times my d, my common difference. Is everybody okay there? <laughs> All right, so normally when we see a number outside of the parentheses, it's usually written in front, but what does that mean that we do with that number? If it's written, if it was right here, what would I do with the five? Distribute it. I would distribute it into that parentheses, right? So we're gonna do the same thing, we're just kind of distributing backwards, but it's the same thing, okay? So now I have 15 plus 5n minus 5, right? Is it okay there? Yes, now I can combine like terms. So 15 minus 5, so I'm gonna have 5n plus 10. So a sub n or f of x is equal to 5n plus 10. That is a linear equation that we are familiar with, right? Yes? Okay, so I want to kind of go back and I want to look at this for just a second. I want you to think about it. So if my a sub 1 was 15, my starting term, and I said, well, if they didn't give us the first term and they gave us the third term, then we would work backwards. And Ethan told us we would subtract 5, and that would get us to the second term. We subtract 5, and it get us to the first, right? So if I wanted that y-intercept, if, if my 1 is at 15, then my 0, I would go backwards. I would subtract 5, and I would be where? Ethan, I would be at 10. Does that make sense? Which is exactly what we ended up with right here. Is everybody okay there? So if I take my A1 and I use my common difference and I do the opposite sign, it would get me my y-intercept, yes? Right? Okay, where does that 5 on the 5 end, thank you, Sergio, where does the 5 on the 5 end come from? In our original information, what does that 5 connect back to? Where did we have a five in the problem? Yeah, it's the it's that common difference, right? Yes. Okay. So that common difference ends up becoming our slope. Is everybody okay with that? Because that's the thing that we're doing every single time, and that's what the slope is, right? It's a <coughs> constant rate of change. So that's how this formula comes about. Is everybody okay with how we did that? I mean, we're going to do it some more. So, all right. So this says use the formula to find how many. Um, pounds he would have in week 20. So if I want to know week 20, what am I doing here? So if I want a sub 20, and I have this equation right here, what am I going to do with it? Plug in I'm going to plug in 20. So 5 times 20 plus 10. 5 times 20 is 100. So then plus 10. So at week 20, he would have how much? 100. 110. Pounds. That's how many pounds he would be lifting in week 10. Is everybody okay with that? Now, could I sit there in my calculator and do plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5? I could do that, but I don't really have to. I can use this formula. Is everybody okay there? All right. So then here it says they want us to write and simplify an explicit formula. All right. So to get to the explicit, I'm going to have to go through the recursive first. Does that make sense? Okay, so first thing I have to find is what? Kind of what do I need? I need the common difference, and the other thing I need is the, what's the other thing I use? First. The first term, right? All right, first term's given to us, right? It's the 16. All right, what's my common difference? Three. D is equal to three. So that means essentially what I have is A sub N is equal to my first term, which is? 16 plus, now do y'all prefer, do y'all want to write the common difference first and then the n minus 1 behind it? Does that make y'all feel better to write it that way? Okay, so my common difference and then my n minus 1 there. Is everybody okay there? Yes, so then I have 16 plus 3n minus 3, which means my a sub n or my formula is what? What's my equation going to look like? 3n plus 13. 3n plus 13. Okay, did what I said a while ago work? If I took my first value and I did the opposite here, I subtracted 3, it gives me my y-intercept. If I take my initial, or if I take my d value, that's my 
slope. Are we okay there? And if I graph that in my calculator, I can go in my table and those better match, right? Like this should be, x should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the y value should be 16, 19, 22, 25, 28. If it's not, I did it wrong. Is everybody okay there? How you can check that? Yes? Okay. All right, this one. What is D here, Casey? 12. All right. So what do you think? We're gonna do, we're gonna show the math, but what do you think the equation is gonna be? What's the slope gonna be? Twelve n. Twelve n. Okay, slope's gonna be twelve. I'm gonna have twelve, so twelve n. All right, where's the y-intercept gonna end up being? It's going to be negative 2. So let's check it and see if make sure that it works. All right, so let's check it and see. All right, so I would have a sub n is equal to, first term is 10 plus my b value in minus 1, right? So 10 plus 12 n minus 12. So then I get 12 n looks like minus 2. All right, graph that in your calculator. Go graph 12 n minus 2 in your calculator for me. Like, I want to make sure that we understand, like, we can prove it and we can check it. So there's no reason to ever miss these because we can prove them and check them. Okay, so if we graph 12 n minus 2, I don't really even care what the graph looks like. What I care about is when I go over to the table, does my table match up to what they gave me? So on your table, do you have 1 and 10, 2 and 22, 3 and 34, 4 and 46, 5 and 58? Does that match your table? Okay, so your pattern should match. Is everybody okay there with how you can check these? Yes? Okay. All right, this one. Before we, okay, what's your D value here? What am I doing every time? Um, Adam, what am I doing every time here? Um, you talking about the D? Yeah, what's my D values? Negative eight. Negative eight, okay. So this time, before we even do any work, we know our slope should be what? What's our slope gonna be? Negative eight. Negative eight. All right, so if I'm subtracting eight every time, how do I get back to my y-intercept? I'm gonna add eight, so what do we think the y-intercept should be? Should be 78. Okay, so we're pretty sure that that's what our equation is going to be. We're going to prove it through the math, and you're going to show it on your paper when you do this. So you're going to have minus 8 times n minus 1 this time. So that's going to give you 70 minus 8n plus 8, which would give us exactly what we said. All right, so check that in your calculator and make sure that it works. Like, we want to make sure that it works every single time. Now, when you're doing this on your assignment, you're going to write the a sub n, you're going to write the first term, minus a times the n minus 1. Like, that's what you're going to do on your assignment because I just want to make sure that we have that down. But when you get on your little quiz that you're going to take tomorrow because you have like a little five-question quiz, if you don't need to do that, I'm not going to make you do that. When you take your test on Friday, if you don't need to do that, I'm not going to make you do that. Like, if you understand how that works and you can just write the equation, then I'm okay if you just write the equation. But on your assignment, like I want you to show it just so that you have the practice of how to do it because you do have to know how. All right, did it work in your calculator? Did everything match up? We had 1 and 70, 2 and 62, 3 and 54, 4 and 46, 5 and 38, yes? Okay, good deal. Any questions so far? All right, back here. So they want us to write an explicit formula to represent the sequence and then they want us to use the formula to find the indicated term. All right, so what is our D value going to be here? Um, Bryson, what's the D value going to be? D is 9, so I'm going to have A sub n is equal to, what do I start with here? So 8 plus 9 times n minus 1. So I'll have this. 
So what is my equation? Nine n minus one. Nine n minus one. All right. So now they want me to find a sub twenty six. So how am I doing that? Plugging in twenty six. I'm gonna plug it in. So I'm gonna have nine times twenty six, and then minus one. You're doing your calculator. What you get? Um, two hundred thirty three. Hundred thirty three. Everybody okay there? Yes. All right. This one. Set my equation of a sub n is equal to what? Tell me what to write. Uh, Sergio. Uh, I know we kind of want to write it as 18 minus because we started with that. And if you wrote it that way, like I wouldn't necessarily mark it wrong, but um, I mean, we do want to write it in the correct format. All right, so I want the 30th term. So what am I doing then? <coughs> 30 for n. Yeah, negative 6 times 30, and then add 18. Negative 162. Way faster than sitting there doing minus 30, minus 30, or sorry, like minus uh, 6, minus 6, minus 6, minus 6, right? Doing that 30 times? I don't want to do it. Okay, number 9. Mrs. Willis wrote a sequence on the board, but the first two terms of the sequence were accidentally erased. They want us to explain how we would find a sub 1 and then actually find it. So how would we find it? Because we've already talked about this. What do I need to know first? Um. Yeah, I need to find D, my common difference. So what is D here? Seven. So D is equal to seven. So if I wanted to go backward, or if I need to go find A sub one, how would I do that? You subtract it. Okay, so first we find D, which was seven, right? And then instead of adding, we're gonna subtract seven. We just, and what, how many times do we do that? Yeah, twice to get to a sub one. All right, so if I subtract it once, that gives me a sub two. What is that value? Two. What's the value of a sub two right here? Um, 27. 27. So then what's the value of a sub one? Then it says write an explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence. All right, so we're going to start with a sub n is equal to, set this up for me, Adam. Um, do I need to start with 20, right? Yep. you to at least and, and here's the deal on your assignment like I'm okay if you write this and go directly to here I'm okay with that but I do want you to write this first everybody okay there on your quiz tomorrow on your test not required but on your assignment I do want you to at least write that part all right number 10 Gina and Dave are computing terms in the sequence and they gave us 29 40 51 62 Gina, Gina says a sub 10 is 128 
and Dave says, hey, says the 15th term is 183. They want to know who is correct. So before I can even check what those terms are, I need to find what? The explicit. Yeah, I need to find basically the equation. So I've got A sub N is equal to 29 plus what here? What is our D value? D is 11, so then I'm going to have 11 times N minus 1. So then that's going to give me um, 11 N plus 18. What y'all got? 11 N plus 18. Is that what y'all got in your calculator? Yes. Okay, so if I want to check, um, it was Gina. She wanted, Gina wanted A sub 10. So I need 11 times 10 plus 18. And then I got Dave down here who had A sub 15, the 15th term. So that would be 11 times 15 plus 18. Somebody got Gina? 128, all right, so she's right, all right, what about Dave, what did we get for him? 183. 183, so he's right, so we would say both are correct, everybody okay with that one? All right, the next one, it says, um, Mr. Daniels asked his students to write an explicit formula for 54, 49, 44, 39. Peyton wrote the following formula. Determine, oops, determine Peyton's error and write the correct formula. Okay, so let's take a look at it. A sub n is equal to 54, is that okay? All right, then we've got plus n minus one, that's standard, and then times five back there. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the problem? Okay, so there's the problem right there. D should be a negative five. All right, so we know what the problem is, so now all we gotta do is fix it, right? So A sub N is equal to 54, and we're gonna do the minus five times N minus one. That's what it should have been. Right. So then that would give me a sub n is equal to negative five n. Plus, I got fifty nine there. So what about? Okay. Questions on that? Everybody understands why it should be a negative five, not a positive five, right? Okay. Okay. Number 12, Eduardo has a jar containing 21 coins. Each day he adds three coins to the jar. Write the first four terms of the sequence. What's the first term? 21. 21, all right, the next one is? Uh, 24. Okay, then? 27. And then? 30. Okay, so now I have the first four. They want us to write a recursive formula. So that's what we did yesterday. So when we have the recursive, remember, we have to include what? Yeah, we have to have the a sub one, so we already know a sub one, so a sub one is equal to 21. All right, then I add the other part, which is your a sub n, right? We're okay there? It's, actually, that's the n minus one. a sub n minus one, and then plus our common difference, which is three. three. Is everybody okay with being able to write that? So when you write that recursive, it has to have this and this. Everybody good there? If you have to write it tomorrow on your quiz, you have to have both, both those things on there. Everybody good? Yes. All right, they want us to now write the explicit formula. So to do that, we've got a sub n is equal to, what do I start with? 21. 21 then? Plus three. Plus three times my n minus one, so I've got 21 plus two n minus three. So a sub n is equal to three n plus 
18. And if I took 21, I subtracted 3, that'd get me to the 18, so I'm good. I can check it in my calculator if I need to. <coughs> they want me to find the number of corns, coins he would have on the 28th day. So, Casey, what do I do there? Okay, then it says explain why the formula, um, explain which formula you use. So we use this formula. Why did we use this one and not this? Why did we use the explicit, not the recursive? Because you can just plug in. Yeah, explicit's way faster and easier when you plug it in, right? So the end there. So explicit, explicit is faster, and all, and we can just plug in our a sub n, like whatever n value we want. Everybody okay there? 